Welcome back to Bruce's Bees, everyone. I'm out here in Utah visiting family. This is Reed, one of my grandbabies. Isn't he a cute little joker? <laughs> anyway, I was even able to sneak in a little bit of a bee adventure this morning. It's August 6th, got to meet with one of my viewers and got to meet his family and we had a good time uh, working some bees. If you like what you see, if you hit that thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Let's get on with the video. My daughter Emma, she's riding down with me. She's gotta go to work nearby for a couple hours, but, but I'm gonna drop her off down there. But she's joining me for the ride. them off at her workplace. Man, it's pretty out here. We just have a little ways for to go. close I'm excited about this about to see someone I haven't seen in a while that's someone I'm in at Hive Life yep looks like a beekeeper well here we are in Goshen Utah it's a beautiful place kind of out in the desert though this is Jonathan Mackley uh, met him at Hive Life last year him and his wife Heather he's got some bees just thought we come down and check it out it's kind of fun uh, it was a beautiful drive down what about yeah, about 8 45 in the morning Got a nice breeze blowing through. So if you hear the wind and the mic, I don't have my other camera here, so I'm sorry about that, but it'll be all right. It's pretty windy out here. We're kind of in the desert. Yeah, welcome to uh, Goshen. Yeah, the desert. <laughs> but it's small town out in the country here in Utah. It's really beautiful though. Uh, mountains all over the place. So what do you want to do, Jonathan? Should we crack open a couple of hives and yeah, see what's got? Yeah, we can got? bust some hives open and see what, what we're working with here in Utah, so. All right, sounds good. Let's yep. do it. This is probably my first time ever wearing a true full out bee suit. He's in one of uh, <laughs> Jonathan's suits here, so that's fine. Though I did pull out some pants. I got some pants from Guardian Bee that I was wearing uh, with some of my meaner bees the last couple of weeks. Here, you got yeah, a lot of stuff in here. Wow, nice looks like you're ready. You're ready to grow, aren't you? Yeah, so I've got a lot of boxes and feeders and frames. And What's your goal? Uh, well, like aspirationally four to 500, but yeah. realistically as i learn I, I might i might scale that number down so what's going to be your main <laughs> what's your main focus is it honey is probably it... almond pollination and then okay. maybe nuke cells and stuff utah's not a big honey state unfortunately Do, is there a need to pollinate the stuff around here the there's fruit some, trees and there's the some alfalfa? of the orchards around here uh, not so much the alfalfa crop but that's a good crop for honey there's a lot of guys a lot of the big commercial guys that do a pretty good amount of honey if they don't go to the dakotas and do the clover honey so you got more storage here what's in here yeah so this is uh this is just uh, unassembled deep hive bodies. What? What is that? Is that cedar? Is that what so, is that? No, that's just uh, probably going to be like your 
uh, ponderosa pine or those lids up here. Yeah, so those are uh, those styrofoam. Are I just take a two inch polystyrene board uh -huh. and I route out the inside so it fits and it has that entrance so it gives them the upper ventilation okay. and gives uh, top insulation to the hive so I can overwinter them in Utah. So this is actually the lid that you put on yeah, top? Yes, so I put that on top and I put the actual lid that sits right on top of that and they can go in and out of that. That cut out right there is an upper okay. entrance. Do you use an inner cover too or no? No, that, that's it. Okay, that's got cool. enough space that I can do a, a big sugar brick underneath the lid. Yeah. I want to put sugar bricks on top of the frames in the winter time. That's pretty that's cool. Just, so anyone who lives, lives up north, that might be something to look into. So here's this pump right here. Looks kind of similar to what I do. Do you just use that to agitate it? Yeah. Yeah, Stick so it back in there. A, just a two inch trash pump from yep. Harbor Freight. The similar setup goes in, agitates it, comes back yeah. out, and then out to the. And I just put a bulkhead fitting in my tank right here so I don't have to go back to the top bed. So that makes it kind of nice where it'll, it'll oh, show yeah. the floors down into kind of the bottom. What do you use out here for your smoker in Utah? So uh, I kind of got turned on to to this just recently. We've got uh, we got some people in the the Utah Beekeepers Association that give away a bag of cedar bark. Oh, okay, cedar so, bark. So they've got all the cedar bark, and the cool thing about the cedar bark is it it'll it'll shred up. I mean, you can leave it whole, or you can kind of rub it like that, and it gets it fine for starting. Oh, yeah. But that works great. Awesome. And it's got man. a really really unique scent. Or yeah, it's much better than pine smoke. straw. All the pine straw yeah. is okay, but yeah, it's it's kind of kind of different. I've this is the first season I've used it, but I've, I've I really enjoy using it. It's nice. It doesn't blow a lot of ash. Is it anything, cool? So. Cool smoke. Yeah. yeah. I don't imagine the. You don't have a lot of pine needles or pine straw here, no, do you? No. No. Yeah, so you much, have to figure out other stuff. Not too much of that. Yeah. So you know, grass or wood chips, yeah. whatever. So that works pretty good. All right, Jonathan. You got a real nice little bee yard here. How many hives you got right here? Do you think? Uh, About. Total in the in, around my house, I've got sixty-seven colonies. Sixty-seven. Okay. Yeah. So we don't we don't have those. Uh, those southern flows like you guys have so this, <laughs> this is my only couple of hives that's got some honey supers on them all right they were robust enough that i could i felt like i could add add some honey supers too yeah um they were really slow to start putting anything in them. i think it's mostly alfalfa i see yeah. you got an alfalfa field just yeah, right so there alfalfa there the neighbor across over there has alfalfa and then just to the west of us about a mile of town there's some really large alfalfa fields Bigger, alfalfa is probably my favorite kind of honey alfalfa slash clover what, whatever they have at cox honey up in shelly idaho the creamed honey stuff have you ever had that before yeah i would suspect they probably do a little bit of both but man that stuff's good so alfalfa is a very 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 super sweet honey right yeah really sweet it uh, also crystallizes pretty quickly which is perfect for yeah, creamed honey, creamed honey. Let's right. see. oh it looks nice oh wow that's a nice looking colony man so this is you know you can see all that New fresh wax, they're just up here working this one pretty good. So, can we pull out a frame and let me just taste yeah, that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. We've got space for nine frames here, so. That's perfect, yeah. So, yeah, they're just, just kind of capping that. All right. All right, we're gonna take a finger scoop, see how it is. It's okay. kind of a beautiful, blue light colored honey. Oh man, I'm already tasting it almost. Oh yeah, that's that flavor I really like. It tastes a lot like that Cox honey I get, that cream honey. Tastes a lot like that. Yeah. Oh man, that's so good. Great honey from J H Farms, courtesy of Jonathan Mackley and his bees. So Jonathan, what are you doing to treat for mites? Probably here in the next couple of weeks, I put Apivar strips in, usually in mid-August to early September. And then I'll go pull those, you know, that puts you somewhere into, depending when you start, either the 1st of October or the middle of October. And then we have a pretty good broodless period, you know, December, early December. We get some of those warmer days in December. Sometimes it's kind of mild. We don't get snow until February, January in Utah, and it'll be, be cold, but there's not a lot of snow. And we'll have a day that's 40, 50 degrees. We'll come and hit them with uh, oxalic acid vapor. Uh, when they're when they're broodless and that usually wipes them out pretty good until until spring I went into winter this year with 52 colonies came out of winter with 45 colonies your yeah. average 10% a little over 10% loss But that's uh, not that's not bad especially yeah. as cold as it gets out yeah, here. So, so that's awesome So they do pretty good just like I said you just got to get get those mites under control I've had winters where they don't come out of winter if you don't get those mites if you wait too long to treat they you definitely ever, ever winter in double deeps yeah, overwinter and double beat deeps or even singles. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so this is a box that I just added some comb to, uh, or a second box. Just 
couple days ago, not too long ago. So oh, you're starting to draw a little bit out. Now you're actively feeding them now, just trying to draw this comb out and get them correct. Get them built up, right? Correct. Yes, yeah, so I probably need to feed them. They're just barely starting to starting to hit that one just a little bit. But like I said, this has only been on for I think two or three days. So oh, there's a queen right there's there. There's your queen. If you look really, really, she's really dark. She's a uh, she's beautiful. Yeah. If you look really, really close, you can see the. There's little bits of blue paint left on her, so she's actually a 2019 queen. Oh wow, she's still filling it up though, huh? Yeah, we've got a, I've got a handful of 2019s left. A lot of them, wow. they kind of went to puts on me, but but I, I usually when I add my box, I always pull, I'll pull a full frame of brood up into the top box, um, and then just make sure my frames are just tight against each other. I find that for me personally, they seem to draw really well between two brood frames. If I can take the foundation, stick it between two brood frames. There's a frame you pulled up right here, right? Yep. Yeah, so this and is one that went to the bottom frames. box. So I brought up the feeder and dropped three frames below. So two frames took up the space of the feeder and then one frame took up the brood frame underneath. Let's see what we got. We're down here in the bottom box. It looks like they got some honey down in there. Yeah, they've they've definitely been filling up the boxes. I don't I don't do anything with these bottom frames. How long ago did you add the, the second deep on there? Uh so this second deep was just this week. So Wednesday or Tuesday. You must have some alfalfa around here somewhere. Yeah, they're, plus I've been feeding them. Oh yeah, that's probably, that's true. Just cause we, we went from nothing to something really quick. Usually alfalfa, you know, it's, it flowers kind of all in a short, a short amount of time. They're pretty so. calm. I, I want my bees to be more calm. Hopefully my bees eventually, I have had bees like this in the past that were fairly calm. Yeah, let's say they had a queen cell that they tore so. down. Maybe they're, uh, that, that's 2019, the queen might be getting superseded. She's about to get superseded. You have plenty of drones around? Yeah, there's there's a few colonies that are doing some drones. There's not a terrible amount. Jonathan, are there are a lot of farmers around here, a lot of beekeepers around here that have bees in this area. Like if, if you did need a queen to get mate, are there other colonies in the area that she could mate with? Um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a decent amount. I've got a couple of commercial outfits that are in the valley near me. So I'm hoping next year to do a little more on the, on the queen rearing. I just, just didn't get to it this year just because I, well, split, I, I, just I split my hives so heavily this year again trying to trying to grow it takes a lot of a lot of resources to oh yeah you know do the queen so that's one of those long skinny ones yeah, that's probably so. not a viable cell so they're like, trying to they like might they're be super seeding this old girl she's still way which is surprising i'll leave them alone if they want to make a well, queen, they'll, she'll probably lay until if they're super seeding her she may just lay until that new virgin until, the, around, until, until they decide to run around happens, so yeah the bees the bees know they do. Sometimes you just gotta let them do what they're gonna do. It's nice, a lot of brood. They were filling every spot though with honey, weren't they? Yeah, they're they were back filling. So what about that next one? They drawing it out. Well, yeah, so this is. When you put them between two fully drawn frames, they Absolutely. seem to really, really hit it hard. When you're feeding them or doing a flow, yeah, they'll do a good job with that. Did she laid anything in those? Yeah. No, they. She moved up and started yeah, laying. Sure, yeah. And most times they'll get jump on that brand new comb. Yeah. Couple more cells in the middle there. Right. Yeah, like I said, there's well, a handful. Just leave them alone, let them do their thing, I guess. It's so awesome when they start drawing that out like that, isn't it? Yeah, so, I love it. There's nothing cooler looking than. The eggs in there, that's kind of. Yeah, so they've used so a little bit. Yeah. There. Strong colony right now. Maybe they're going to supersede her, and that'd be a good time of the year to do it now. Yeah. Give, them, give the new queen a chance to kind of get built up and. Yeah. And roll them before winter. So that queen survived COVID, huh? <laughs> that is a hashtag COVID survivor right there. Mark safe from, from COVID. What's this one here? Is so another one, one we're going to check on? One of, my, one of my stronger colonies. We went through and added the seconds and, and fed everything just to make sure that we were good and they weren't robbing each other. Uh, I told my wife to put a pile of rocks on the lid any of the lids she couldn't get off. Oh, that wow. usually tells us there's a they, lot of... They glued them down. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of wax and probably a lot of stuff underneath the lid. So we'll, we'll see what we're working with here. Oh, wow, yeah. That's what I like to see right there. That's oh, yeah, beautiful, just, man. Just Gosh, look, it's so good, Jonathan. Man. I could almost put a honey stick on that. Yeah. Of course, my focus is honey, so I... Yeah, see, see, so, and, and like right now, like I said, if you... The, a lot of the guys that do the alfalfa cut right around the 24th of July, that last week of July into the first, second week of August, just depends. They usually will do uh, two or three cuttings per season. So first cutting is June-ish, middle of June. It does really well when it's hot. So it seems like they cut the second cutting pretty quick. But a lot of guys want to cut it before the flower gets real heavy on it because of the protein content and all sure, that stuff that they sure. want for the farming. But you know, your, your window of opportunities 
two weeks max, you know, a couple times a year. So you gotta have the, the right population at the right exact time here to get a decent flow. And they can kind of put it in the box all summer long, but it seems like those couple little short flows happen, you know, just every once in a while. Yeah. What do you think you're gonna do with these? You're gonna just leave them alone or try to split them? Is it too late to split? Um, you could probably do some splits this time of year. I'm trying to get everything up to full capacity because I'm probably gonna try and go to do the almond pollination this year. Put all that bridge comb on the side. It's the only disadvantage of the using the one and a half gallon feeders. I like it though, because you get a little more space, you can get this outside frame with those Absolutely. one gallon feeders. They're in there so tight usually, you're just tearing and rolling bees. And Yeah, one thing you won't see here is you don't see any peppermint candies in my hives, so we're not, we're not doing Not that. a high beetle issue, huh? No hive beetles in Utah. It's too dry and too hot. Yeah. So what do you do on something like this if they need more space, like if you feel like they do? do you, see, that's the hard thing is, I may look at doing is equalizing. Mm -hmm. Or just taking some frames out of some of these double D's they're just really robust but a lot of it like I said they're just they're just storing syrup or nectar or whatever yeah we were we were pretty much in a dearth and then you know they were I had I had some real issues with robbing pretty early this year some drone cells right there yeah they're putting a few you know I guess that's a sign of a sign of a healthy colony yeah, I, I believe it is over there you're like those are your super on track hives yeah. These over here are the ones you're kind of just watching and working on, trying yeah. to keep, you know, nurse along and yeah, see so what these happens. Ones, these are ones that were increased from nukes or ones that are getting close to going from a nuke to a, a full sized uh, deep hive body. You can tell that I watched some of Bob Benny's Bitty, videos. Yeah. So yeah. I like this pretty well. I'm also oh, yeah, the one, the one hole, not a lot of population. Is that why he does that, or for a slow trickle? Yeah, just a slow trickle, just to kind of keep some you know, fed and doesn't drown them. It's not too much at a the time. They can take it as they need it, but it seems to work pretty well. Well, now so they, one, they look pretty darn good, this man. This one's ready to ready so we, to expand. You want to put them in a big box? Yeah. So I need to. Uh, so want to do it right now? We could. That's kind of fun. See if yeah, they look great, man. Look at that. Yeah, so this is the one that's just filling out, so we definitely need to give them some room. And this one was a weaker one, you thought? Yeah, so this one this one was smaller a few God, weeks ago. So, I'm just amazed at how calm they are. Look at them. So calm. Awesome. The power of feeding your bees, right? Oh, yeah. All that. All that. As soon as I kind of realized that nature was not providing this year like I hoped it would, um, I prefer not to feed if I don't have to, but when you have to, you, you you just need to. I think, you know, within the backyard beekeeping scene or the hobby beekeeper, I think a lot of people uh, undervalue feeding for sure. Time just got improvised. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this whole lid into a bottom board that's here. That's right, that's right. That'll work as a temporary bottom board until he gets something else done or <laughs> leaves that thing around. But those bees need to be in a bigger box, right? Yeah, yeah, we need to, we need to graduate them. See if we can... See if we can get these out of here without. So we're gonna have it'll end up being an eight frame, right? Yeah, uh, so it'll be an eight frame. I do oh. yeah, a gallon and a half feeder and then eight frames. Hold it. Yeah, I think she's gonna be fine to keep an eye on her. Let's get a couple of frames that we can slide down in there. So on this one I'll put a frame, one frame on each outside, and I'll put one in the middle, one checkered board, just to get them to Draw that extra frame and start making some space pretty quick. Oops, she ran on the wrong side. She's, she's in there. In. She just crawled up on the bottom there. Okay, good. Just so, yeah. for one right there. A lot of honey right there. They always draw them tops out just so fast. See, there's some wonky comb. A little bit. It's not bad though. That's a perfect one for towards the outside. So you put a new frame right here then? Yeah. Okay. Just because they're gonna. Is that a new frame? No. Yeah, so this one's the new frame. So okay, outside, find one towards the middle-ish, wherever okay. it makes sense. And then one on the very outside. And then one on the very outside. All right. And then just make sure they're pushing real tight together so they get the proper spacing and then center them up usually. I just graduated to. It's an eight frame. And then if they fill that up, we probably won't add a second box on that this year do you think or what uh, do you think it just depends on how they do yeah if I, if I feed them heavy enough i probably could get them into a second box that's the goal is to get everything into double deeps by fall winter yeah. so we'll see if we get there or not but like i said just as well. here's a good 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 shake yeah. for if you're going to do a mite treatment 
Absolutely. You see how the queen's down there? You could have easily done a mic check on those. Assuming a lot of them probably were nurse bees. Good deal, man. Awesome. Hope it'll do well. Just so Bruce kind of gets a feel for what it's like, you know, we're going to take them into my closest closest thing to a spicy hive that I've got. <laughs> I'm going to be trying Greg Burns and go without gloves here, but I may put them on. I may not be as tough as old Greg is. Yeah, go ahead and be a man. Just get stung on your hands, you know? <laughs> not all of us are as strong as Greg Burns. He's pretty tough is what he is. Yeah. You know, they're checking us out. I mean, they're not as calm and just minding their own business. They're kind of, they're aware that we're here for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be... Yeah, they're more... They're calmer than they have been in the past. But. Yeah, it could be that flow coming in. But yeah, they're checking. They're definitely... So there's a lot more than flying around. This is one of my hottest hives. <laughs> well, if this is your hottest hive, of course, like I say... <laughs> Time of day has, my, has a lot you know, to do with it. And mine, certain times of the year, they're not bad either. But Yeah, when I split this split this box apart the other day and did some work with it, they were they were intolerable. So they've definitely calmed yeah, down. They weren't dark even... Bees. They're, just, they weren't even drawing any of this stuff out either. Oh wait, what? You said they hadn't drawn this out? Yeah. How many days gone. ago? Well, Look at it. they've got it drawn out good now. I pulled the queen excluder off of this you can hive see. because you can see they all weren't in there. The wax being drawn. They weren't drawn out. These foundations. They're definitely drawing it out now. Do you have? Are you feeding? Yeah, you're feeding them. These ones I haven't fed oh. as much just because I had the soup, honey supers on. So they're producing honey, huh? So once yeah. I put the supers on, I don't like to feed them because I don't want them putting sugar. You're gonna get some honey off of this one for sure. Yeah, I think I'll I think they will. I, I'm kind of surprised actually, Bruce. You could tell they're a little bit more irritable than the other colonies we've been in, but they're just they got a good flow coming in, so they're that might probably be. just enjoying that. That's a beautiful honey. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy because this a lot of these a lot of these foundations they weren't drawn out, and I had a I had a queen excluder to kind of keep them out of my honey super. Absolutely. I pulled that, just said, whatever, I want to see if they'll draw it. And they- They have. They've been getting on it. How so, long ago did you say it was that they, that oh, you checked in them last? I think it was probably three, three weeks ago, three or four okay, weeks well, ago, Okay, well, yeah, maybe. They, they definitely have had time to do that. Yeah, yeah so we get a little bit of honey this year. Good deal, man. And eight, eight your 4,000 pounds of honey, whatever you got, but. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Absolutely. I would say I'm disappointed, but I'm not because I didn't want to get stung, but I, it would have been okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm disappointed too. I was hoping to show you something that you would relate to, but, but you're disappointing me. <laughs> well, getting after that, ooh, getting after that yellow jacket right there. Yeah, they, 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 they weren't going to they they like put up with that. Good stuff, man. Beautiful. Beautiful bees you got, man. They're doing yeah, great. Appreciate that. So Jonathan, that was fun. We got in some colonies and man, your bees are looking good. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. It's not too and bad. we got some other folks out here with us. Jonathan, this is your family. Why don't you introduce us to your family Absolutely. here? Absolutely. This is uh, this is my oldest son, William. He's 13. He'll be coming with us to the Hive Life Convention this year. So he's pretty excited awesome. about that. Good deal. It's his birthday. This is my younger boy, Parker. Parker? How old are you, Parker? Nine. He's nine. nine. <laughs> Savannah in the background. She's the moody teenager. She's 15. <laughs> Thanks a lot, <laughs> She Dad. loves cameras. I've got three girls, so I get it. But... <laughs> no, she's great. She's, awesome, she's a super though. good girl. Yeah. We love her. Our youngest, Lydia. Hi. She's seven. And, and then the glue that holds us all together right here, my wife, Heather. That's how it always works. Behind <laughs> yep. every great man is a great woman. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> what to say? Absolutely, for sure. Well, thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah. And, Thank you. And, uh, it really was my pleasure having you. We enjoy you, you coming was out a lot and of spending fun. some time. Well, I'm going to sign off for now. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.